Hello everyone, this is Jotto, and welcome to my patch review. Now, this is the patch for the uh, 12th of April, and it is a patch that I think a lot of people have been anticipating, because Elf Winter is over! Oh god, end of Elf Winter, seriously, it's been since last November, well, okay, this is debatable, because, um... Like, I, I guess Advance Never was Elves? It kind of what? Uh, I don't know if that counts. That wasn't really Elves, that was just green creatures. But anyway, so, since last November, there's been Elves aggro, dominating everything. And it's been nerfed multiple times. And then finally, they've managed to actually kill it. Well, not kill it, they've managed to nerf it down to conceivable power uh, when it comes down to it, so it's not tier 1 anymore for the first time in months. So yeah, the entirety of winter was uh, dominated by these things, and they're finally not going to be the best deck, which I'm very, very happy with. Now, besides that, we got uh, 10 cards changed, and 5 rarity changes because trials balance, which is always appreciated. Good job, guys. But um, when it comes down to it, we've got the metagame coming into this was... Elves at the top, then we had, like, Burning Rage being completely stupid, uh, so, yeah, Rage was second, and then you had Mono Order, like, Mono Order Aggro, Zombies, Implants, One Turn Heal, uh, all in, like, Tier 2, in that order, really. Uh, you had One Turn Heal, I'm trying to think of anything else. Uh, I think that was about it, it was, like, the Tier 2 decks were, like, Rage, Order, Zombies, Wisdom Implants, then you had Elves, and then like One Turn Heal. It was actually pretty diverse. Uh, six deck metagame, well, okay. Elves and five decks uh, metagame, and it was fairly diverse. The decks that could realistically get like really high on the ladder were actually just Elves, Rage, and Mono Order. And the last season like ending was like five Elves plus like one Rage deck and... I could have probably got top 10 with Mono Order if I've been playing on the last couple days. But anyway, so that's the metagame going into this. So what got changed? Now we'll start with, I guess we'll start with the nerfs to Elves specifically, and then we'll go into Rage and then go from there, I think. So first things first, we've got Hermeleon. Hermeleon got changed to Double Order. This kind of surprised me. Now, um, there was actually a guy on the farms that called this change, like, exactly, he called it being changed to double order, and I responded to it literally an hour before we got the patch notes saying I didn't think they changed it to double order, because I think the problem was elves, not Hermeleon, and uh, he may have some design problems, but he was still kind of cool to use with Ancient Treant and things like that, so maybe they just leave him alone. No. Uh, so, Hermeleon is now the only one of the advanced heroes with the two-level advanced heroes. I'm just going to call them the extra heroes, because that's what they were. They were the six extra heroes we were given. Or the intermediate heroes or something. But anyway, so out of the extra heroes, he is now the only one with a double-level requirement, which is really surprising to me. I think if any hero was going to get a double-level requirement on that hero power, it would be Coronas. Do I think it's necessary? No. But the point is, that's what I would expect. But Hermeleon is now debatably the worst hero in the game. I think this is the only change in the patch that I'm really opposed to. I think this is a bad change. Uh, I think it's the only change in the patch that I think is just awful. Uh, they should have changed it differently, like make it four mana with one of each level, or redesign the ability entirely. Uh, because the way it is currently, it breaks its own cycle. Uh, the cycle of heroes are one of their main aspect, one generic, and now it doesn't fit that cycle anymore. And also, it's strictly mono order now, and they already have base Alexa to cover that. Like, the way the order heroes works, you've got angels, soldiers, and then, like, Hermeleon's supposed to be the, like, crazy trick guy. Then just change him to do something else, because currently it's, like... If you're playing any aggro deck, you're using soldiers as well. So you'll just use basic Alexa. And I don't know, maybe you could try Hermeleon. I don't think it would work. Uh, maybe it's worth trying, but I think basic Alexa is where you want to be at. Uh, the control decks run basic Alexa because you can sacrifice the militia to draw Stronghold Metropolis. And the angel decks use advanced Alexa. So Hermeleon just seems like a hero with no purpose. Uh, so I'm not... 
I'm not convinced that this guy will see any play, uh, at least until the next set comes out. And in Trials, he is now the worst hero, not close. Like, Hermeleon was not a good hero in Trials, but he was pickable. Uh, but now, double order, you can't really use it. Like, I... I'm not... <sighs> okay, I think he's a better pick than Advanced Alexa. I think he's below Enoch, though. That's the level of, like, bad we're looking at here. I don't think this guy will see any play, um... Until the next set comes out. So that's the end of June. We actually got that confirmed. It's the end of June is when we're getting the next set. So, yeah. But as far as Hermeleon goes, the guy, the the angelic soul in a suit of armor will not be showing up anytime soon. And before anyone says that the elf decks are just going to play double order, no, they won't. They will not. That's an insane nerf as far as that's concerned. You would never go double order. I'll, like, if someone does it, Kudos, but it's not going to be very good. Like, it's better just to run mono at that point. Anyway, so the other elf nerfs were... This is what I like to call the... We want to keep Nienna the same, but we don't... Like... Yeah, I'm not really sure how this is going to work. So basically, I still think Nienna's the problem, and it's resulted in two cards being nerfed. Summoner Druid got reverted back to its previous stat line, which was 1-1. That's fine. It means it dies to Fire Blast, Mutant, you get the point. Now, the main point of this is that... You play it for free, and then you get two mana discount next uh, next turn. But now it dies to mutant if you play it past turn two, because you can't get the full activations out of it. And it's it's another one of the one one elves, the one HP elves, which means it's very vulnerable to fire blast, and it's vulnerable to fiat and things like that. So you can't just move the summoner forward like you could before. So the stat nerf is relevant, and I think that this is fine. I think summoner was actually okay as a one one. Uh, still the least epic feeling card in the game. <laughs> I've said this before. Summoner Druid feels like a rare or an uncommon. It's kind of awkward. But, um, balance-wise, he's he's fine right now. Uh, I think he'll still see play. He was seeing play before when he was a 1-1, so he'll still see play. So, yeah, this one's understandable. The Haldiri nerf. Now, this is weird. Haldiri got changed to a 3-2. Now, a lot of people have been talking about how this is not a good change. I'm not sure whether it is or not. It's confusing. Basically, this... Like... <sighs> they nerfed Haldiri so they didn't have to nerf Nienna. That's the way I see it. Because Nienna... If you get a whole bunch of small stuff off Nienna, it's fine. If you start playing Haldiri's off Nienna, like, it's not fine. Uh, with the 3-3s. Three because they just run through the board and you get massive amounts of advantage. So... Like, the Haldiri train is not going to kill people anymore off Nienna. And it also nerfs Nature and Trials, which is something else they need to do. Uh, although, personally, if you wanted to nerf Nature and Trials, it just made Elf Warrior uncommon. But, um, yeah, so Haldiri got nerfed in Trials as well. So, sure, it brings the tri Trials balance down a bit. But, like, you can't really go off how Haldiri Rider could be nerfed outside of this. Because if you make it a 2-3, it's still too strong. And if you... Make it cost 5 mana? That feels really weird. Um, I guess you could make it cost 5. I don't know. Uh, that seems really strange at that point because then they don't have... Any I guess they have Storm Fairy at that point in Curve. So, yeah, you can make it cost 5. Or make it cost like 3 levels or something. But what this does mean is that Sun Chaser Alright will be seeing more play. And it also means that Nature Midrange decks have a reason to exist. Uh, we were talking about this on my stream when we did the podcasty thing. Uh, with Helios, Raijan, and Fuzz. We spent a couple hours just talking about the patch extensively. And what the Haldir Rider nerf does allow is for Sun Chaser Aurite to actually exist as a card. Basically, the problem with Nature Midrange decks is you played Haldiri because it was incredible. Like, you played it, it was removal, it was, like, burst damage, it was insane. You play Haldiri, and that's, like, your midrangey reason to play Nature, right? Yeah, here is the problem. You play Haldiri... And then you realize that if you just took out all the other mid-range creatures and added aggro elves, it was just better. Because Haldiri was like a card that was good in both, but it was just better in aggro. And it was better than anything else you could play. At least now, you actually have a reason to go three levels uh, instead of four mana, two levels. So Sun Chaser will see more play. And it means maybe Kainu decks can actually get a bit of a break because they can use Sun Chaser the best. And the metagame seems to be slowing down by about a turn. Not by a ton, but it has slowed down a bit. Which means that you can actually uh, play some of these decks. So I do want to try a Kanu deck. Um, not the Rage one though. There's a Rage Kanu deck which is like one of the faster decks in the metagame currently. But I do want to try some sort of Kanu deck because Sun Chaser is a bit of a brick wall off that deck. So maybe it's worth testing. 
But the way I see it is Haldiri is a nerf to Trials Unconstructed. It will bring Elves back into line. I'm not, like... I think a lot of people are jumping on this like it's the uh, the Holy Grail of nature. Y yeah, sure. But I'm not, like... It, I don't think there's any cards that just are perfect design and should be kept the way they are. Like, I think some of the cards that you could say are perfect and should just be left the way they are, like, permanently, are not the constructed playable ones. Like, the ones that should never be touched are things like Spectral Lorite and, um, I don't know. Like, I'm trying to think of a constructed card that could never be touched. I guess Elite Vanguard? That's pretty good in terms of, like, just vanilla stats and such. But Ry Haldir Rider was not one of them, because it was, it was too strong. Um, it was too strong, but it's a case of, like, maybe you could have just taken the elf tag off it. Maybe that would have done it. Just take the elf tag off it, or, yeah, just something like that. Just take the elf tag off it. You could do that. I guess you'd have to change the artwork of it. It's awkward. I'll put it that way. It's awkward. But the way I see elves is that... Elves are going to be kept in check until the next set comes out, and then it's going to be too powerful again, and they're going to have to nerf Nienna anyway. That's the way I'm, that's how I'm predicting it, because Nienna is still a broken card and will still cause design issues in the future. So that's the Elf Stint out of the way. On to the Rage stuff. Burning Rage, the most anticipated change of the entire patch. Burning Rage was the single strongest card in the entire game. Not close. It was stupid. Uh, it was so dumb, it was impossible to beat a Rage deck with any form of mid-range or control deck because they play Burning Rage and then they laugh at you while you're playing your Library Guards and Ancient Wisdom and they're playing their Word of Fires that has Ancient Wisdom plus Kill a Thing on it and stuff like that. It was just dumb. So, Burning Rage has been changed quite drastically. Its drawback has been redesigned. So basically, it now deals one damage to you for each card in your hand above four. Before anyone says anything, this is a weaker version. It is. We've played with it. You can't do the stupid stuff you could before, which was just like Burning Rage, Burning Rage, Fireball, Dragonfire, 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 and you just kill them and there's nothing they can do. And you take like four damage in the entire game from this Burning Rage. This Burning Rage is still overpowered. <laughs> I'm not really sure what that says about the old one. Like how powerful it was that a severely weaker version is still insane. The current Burning Rage, uh, the reason I actually like the design, I think it's still too strong, but maybe, say, if it's one damage above three, I think that would be better. But the reason I like it is because there's a deck currently that um, me, Raijan, Raijan put a lot of the heavy lifting into it, uh, but yeah, I've been playing it as well, Raijan, Fuzz been playing it, and like, it's just a deck that plays, it's like Rage Aggro, but instead of burn spells, you play Phoenixes, Red Dragon, and like 17 Shrines or 16 Shrines, 4 Altar of Dragons, 4 Burning Rage. It's the stupidest deck ever. And the entire deck is just, you keep your hand size down deliberately. Like, you go Altar turn 2, and then you activate it turn 3 after playing Burning Rage. Just to keep your hand size down below 4, you never take any damage from the Burning Rages. They're just New Horizons that draw you like 1 or 2 cards in the game. And you can have multiple Burning Rages out at 1. You can have 2 out, never have to go up a level, and then you drop dragons into play with the Altar Dragons and you kill them that way. That's like, it's one of the weirdest decks I've ever played. It's not even an aggro deck. It's like some weird concoction of like mid-rangey stuff. Uh, really fun to play, but I'm going to do a deck tech on that uh, pretty soon. But yeah, it does lead to some really cool deck design now, because you actually have to keep your hand size down, and it's very, very skill testing, and it's a very, very different way of playing. You can't just go crazy with it anymore, like, I don't think Rage Aggro decks can really make use of it. Two reasons for this. They want to burn you out with spells, but if they do that, like they try and get value off the Word of Fire, they kill themselves. Because Word of Fire, if you have two Burning Rages, draws three cards. And if you say, we're on four cards like you would have been, and then you top deck Word of Fire, and you go up to five, and then you play it, and oh no. <laughs> now you're up at what, seven cards in hand? And your Burning Rages are going to do three each. So yeah, you can't play it that way anymore. And that and Flame Serpent... Um, like, you can ramp into Flame Serpent, but if you have Flame Serpent, Dragon Fires in hand, you're just holding all these cards, and you, you basically have one card in hand at once. Because you can only play one card to determine these burn spells, and, like, you only really have, say you have a Shrine, Dragon Fire, Flame Serpent, and, like, I don't know, a, just say a Gibber and Ronnie that you just top decked. You basically only have one card in hand, because it's not like you can just Dragon Fire, because if you do that, you draw an extra card and you'll start taking more damage. And if you don't kill them, like, next turn, you'll start taking, like, five or six damage from these Burning Rages. So you can't play it that way anymore. 
So it doesn't really fit in aggro that much anymore. It's a very mid rangey card. It doesn't read blue in a card anymore. It reads almost blue in a card. Uh, it still is too strong, but at least it's more interesting. Uh, that's what I have to say about Burning Rage. Flameborn Incarnate. This was a surprising change. Uh, I do like it, but it was a surprising change. So Flameborn got its cost changed, so it effectively is a 3-drop. Now... The Incarnates have been redesigned in general, and Power Loss has been changed down to Flameborn's uh, old cost, and it has been redesigned again. Now we've got Valor Sworn, and then we've got, at 1-1, one, one, one. then we've got Power Lost and, let's see if I remember all the names of these, uh, Power Lost and the Wisdom one. I'm going to remember this one. Runelet. Alright, yeah, I can remember the names of these things. Power Lost and Runelet at 2 mana 1 level, and then you got Flameborn at 2 mana 2 levels, um, and then you got Deathbound at 3 mana 2 levels, and then Lifebound at 3 mana 3 levels. So you've got, like, a nice spread of levels to mana instead of Power Loss being, like, 3 mana 1 level. It was kind of weird. Uh, there wasn't any Incarnate at 2 mana 2 levels, which was a bit odd. So, yeah, they've, they've kind of done better with the cost there. Now, Flameborn has been untouched outside of the levels and the reason for this was because they wanted to reduce the number of playable two drops in rage aggro now it's just the goblin and fear uh so yeah they reduced the number of playable like one drops in red aggro i'm um, two drops in red aggro i mean so that's fine now you can't go like three fear four flameborn or like three fear three flameborn three goblin i think is what i was playing or like two flameborn four goblin because flameborn on turn two was really bad and that's actually why i like this change because you didn't want to play turn two flameborn anyway in a lot of decks which meant that like it wasn't a control card it was an aggro card but it didn't kind of work so now you can play it with corruption and you can play flameborn along with mesmerizing spirit as your three drops in a harpy deck which is really cool. I like it, guys. Like, it's a powerful 3-drop in the Red Corruption decks. It's a reason to play Red Corruption, even though it doesn't... It doesn't say it's a multicolor card, but it's basically a heavy-hitting win condition in a Harpy deck. So, good job. That's that's a reason to play a multicolor deck. That's that's good, guys, uh, as far as design goes. So, yeah. Well done with the Flameborn. And uh, we'll just continue from here, since that's the, uh, the main set of decks done. Uh, I'll get to the rarity changes afterwards, uh, since I kind of want to go over the rest of the changes to balance first. Power Lost Incarnate has been changed again. <laughs> but, so, the original Power Lost was completely broken. Uh, then, the changed Power Lost was situationally useless or broken. It was just like, why does this exist? Uh, so, it was incredibly overpowered late game and utterly useless on curve utterly useless it was like you could not use the ability and actually kill something because it would it would reduce itself too much so you couldn't use the ability until like turn six or seven so it was just this really weirdly designed card so they redesigned it again so yeah sure so what they've done is that they've made it two mana it's attack and hp are equal to half the number of mana crystals rounded up and its speed is equal to your dominion level so they've retweaked it a bit it is two weak currently uh, so basically, the problem with this is you play it on curve, and it is a, like, okay, so this is basically what happens. It's a 2-mana 1-1. One, one. Then, next turn, with 1 speed. Ne next turn, it's a 2-mana two 2-2 two, two with 1 speed. Okay, um, and then the turn after, you can go up mana, that doesn't do anything. So you go up, um... Yeah, if you go up mana, it's just up to force, it's still 2-2. Two, two. So, then, what do you do? You go up a level, play mutant, maybe, and now you've got a, you've got a goblin with no ability, basically, 2-2 two, two with 2 speed. And then you go up mana, it doesn't do anything. Then you go up another mana, now it's a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, uh, it just doesn't get powerful. Like, the, the funny thing about this is, like, the... Um, you get up to like 10 mana. It's ultra late game. You go 10 mana, you're at 4 levels, 10 mana, and you play, you're play. playing Mono Dominion, or like playing Wisdom Dominion, and you play your 2 mana 5-5 five five with 3 speed, and then you realize it's like turn 15, and your opponent goes Red Dragon, shoot you, shoot you, refresh, kill you. Like, because at that point in the game, it's just so late that a dorky 2-drop is not really going to be doing anything. 
So, I mean, for trials purposes, I can't really see this being played either. I mean, not that Dominion needs another good card in trials, but um, yeah, I think it's a bit underpowered. Although, to be honest, I prefer this being in the game than anything else. I think maybe it'll get buffed up eventually again. Like, um, like a card I'd like to see is like make it a 2-2 with 2 speed. Yeah, just make it a 2-2 two -two with 2 speed and give it the ability, like, uh, whenever you gain a mana crystal from a non-shrine effect, it gets, like, a might counter. Because then it would work really, really well with Power Surge and Word of Power. And that'd be cool, because it's a build-around card and it's still a 2-drop and it's a decent 2-drop that you can build around. That'd be awesome. Currently, it's too weak. I'd rather have an Incarnate that's too weak than too strong, though. I'll put it that way. I'd rather have an Incarnate be an interesting card that's too weak as opposed to just a stupid card to play against. So, that's fine uh, for now. And it's it's just they're getting rid of a problem, and then they'll sort it out later uh, if it doesn't see any play, which I suspect it won't. The other change to Dominion uh, as far as balance goes. Drayla. Now, Drayla got redesigned completely. This was actually based off my design loosely. Um... That I put in the uh, the community like suggestion thread for Drayla. This one's been very polarizing uh, in terms of design. I'm not sure where I fall on it. Uh, basically, it got redesigned completely. So it costs four mana now. So it's been up from the Phoenix cost to the Succubus cost. Basically, the two mana in the aspect, one generic, and then four mana. Still three four for two sp with two speed. That's a decent body. Then, when she enters play, you pick a non-creature card, and then they discard it. You look at their hand, you basically mind extort them, but you can pick shrines as well. And then they discard it and draw. Then, her second ability is, whenever an enemy creature enters the field, you may pay three, and if you do, you put a weakness emblem on it. It's basically something to do in the late game when you have mana. Now, I have a few problems with this. Not the design itself, but the power level of it. Now, a lot of people have been complaining about this being too weak. I don't think it's as weak as people are giving it credit for. I don't think it's quite strong enough. But, yeah, the design-wise is better. It's not, uh, like, the, the suggestion I had was just Mind Extortion, basically. It was just Mind Extortion, then when it died, uh, it, you, your opponent drew a card. Uh, now, this is an, it's an interesting card now, because they can't make it 3 mana. They just can't. They cannot leave it at 3 mana because of Kayanu. You cannot give a Kayanu deck a 4 or 5 with 2 speed that destroys their removal spell when you play it, when it enters play. Can't do it. That's too powerful. So, they can't make a 3 mana. So, yeah, that, that's out of the way as far as balancing this goes. The problem right now is that it comes down really late, and then you play it, and you look at your opponent's hand, and you have to pick a shrine if there is there, and then they discard the shrine and draw a better card because they got shrine flooded, right? So... It often helps your opponent. What I would do to change this is... There's three ways you can balance this, in my opinion. Because it's just too weak. The old Drayla was horrifically designed, though. So I don't think any... Well, okay, not anyone. There was a few people that were unhappy to see it go. But let's be honest. Any Trials player in existence hated the old Drayla with a passion. It was the most annoying card in the entire game in Trials. Like, at least with Red Dragon, they played it. And it's like, yeah, it costs four mana at four levels. And, yeah, okay, you're dead to this thing. Same, it's like the same way you're dead to an Antriel if you don't have response to it. Like, Red Dragon will kill you. Yes, yes it will. Uh, but it's a massive creature, so you kind of expect it to. And at least it kills you quickly. Like, playing as the old Drayla was miserable. It was a 3 mana, like, 3 mana 3 level card that basically read, If you don't have a removal spell or a Cataclysm or something, I'm going to win the game in 15 turns. Because they would just slowly steal your stuff and then beat you to death with it. It was the most grueling way of losing in the entire game and was just annoying as hell. It was also super powerful. Like, Drayla was second best epic in Trials, I think. I think Dragon beat it out. But anyway, um, it was definitely better than, like, Antriel. The reason I think Dragon beat it out is just because uh, Dragon, first of all, didn't lose to Drayla because you never have to attack with the Dragon. And, um... Second of all, it was actually kind of hard to remove. Like, you needed uh, Cataclysm, but then you kill your Andrela, and you needed, like, Helm, basically. That was the only way you could really do it. So, yeah. But Drela was a close second, and it was also in Dominion, so just, it was miserable. And in, ca in casual play, it was annoying, and in competitive play, it was useless, because no one could play it. It was just not good enough. So, they had to redesign it, and they did. Uh, 
Now, I still think this is too weak. I think if I there's three ways you can buff this. You can up you can uh, up the stats. Okay, there's three realistic ways you can buff this, and there's a couple others. You can up the stats, you can increase the effects, or you can reduce the cost. So, if you up the stats, what would you have to up it to? A 4-5 for it to be really good? Because then it's just close to, like, a 4-5 is close to unkillable, though. Like, I'm not sure if you can make a 4-5 of that cost. That's really hard to kill. Uh, so, maybe a 3-5. That would be hard to kill, but it wouldn't be overwhelming in the offense department. So, like, a 3-5. You could... Reduce its cost just to two levels, two dominion levels, so make it like a mono dominion thing, which would be cool actually. You cannot make it three mana because of Kayanu. You can't do it, uh, which I'm not sure if that's a problem in Kayanu's park or Drela's, but anyway. So you can't make a three mana. Uh, you can make it two levels, but that doesn't feel very legendary. Although, given that Summoner Druid is a, uh, an epic, I'm not really sure where that fits. Um, so, reducing cost. I don't know. I like the idea of putting something of this cost in Dominion, so I'm going to say that's fine. You could up the stats to 3-5, uh, or you could boost the effects. Now, the way I would currently tweak it, if it was up to me, would I would reduce the cost of the second ability to 2 mana, and I would change her first ability to be optional, or if you don't want it to be optional, then change it to, if you do, when Drayla dies then they draw a card. Because the problem right now is you take, like, a shrine out of their hand, and then they top deck a removal spell and kill the Drayla. It's like, okay, and you just get tempoed out. So it's like, it's, it usually helps them. Uh, so make it like, when Drayla dies, they draw. So they have to come up with another way of killing her, but when they do, they are not down any cards. So it's actually the disruption, whereas currently it's not really. Like, it's a Vendillion Click effect, which sounds good, but Vendillion Click from Magic only costs 3 mana, and also, it had better stats for the cost, and the way your hand works in Magic is different, because Shrines draw cards, which means that the actual, uh, the cards in hand change more over time, which means that Drayla's effect is less powerful than, say, a Vendillion Click. Uh, but yeah, chaining it to something like Thought Knots here, where that was my original idea, was when it dies, like it didn't have a second ability, and it was when it dies, they draw. That was my original uh, idea, and I still think that's better than this, because it it's not disruption currently, it's just kind of fiddling with their hand. Uh, it's really good against combo decks, and also red decks, but I don't think it's powerful enough to see play outside of that. If the entire metagame is red rush decks, she will see play, because Drayla is brutally insane against red rush decks. You just... Stall for the early game with a massive defensive opening, and then you play Drayla, you take their dragon fire, and then what are they gonna do? Flame Serpent it? Like, seriously, they play Flame Serpent, and then, okay, it absorbs 9 damage, and then you play it later, you take another burn spell, and then they can't play Flame Serpent anymore because the ability counters it. So, like, yeah, Drayla's incredible against Mono Red, uh, but against a lot of other things, it's just not good enough. And it'll get buffed in the future, in, in my opinion, although I do think this is still a better design than the previous. Alright, so I think there's three more cards. Yep, three more cards. Uh, we'll start with Path. Um, Path has been changed slightly. Uh, basically, they want to kill Hermeleon Elves. It's gone now. You can't, you can't do any of the shenanigans. Basically, they've changed it so you can only activate it on your turn, but they're not exhausted. So basically, the trick before was you broke the Path at the end of your opponent's turn, and then they just untapped and attacked. And it was, like, it led to some really silly combos. So they've changed that. Uh, now you can use it for repeating entries to battlefield effects, which is fine. I mean, you can maybe still use it with the Instill, uh, the Instill Life Corruption deck. That's cool. Uh, with Mesmerizing Spirit and Succubus and such. Like, you don't need to go double order, so you can play it with Succubus and just go from there. That's cool, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, yeah, that's that's good enough. Oh, it does cut you out from Namir, but those decks don't tend to play Namir anyway. So yeah, you can you can use it with Instill Life decks, and that's fine. You can use it with the other, like, reusing Battlefield effects. But basically they're saying you can't use this to just play against a control deck and say, I win the game. Uh, and I'm I'm happy with that. And Path is one of those cards that has been redesigned so many times because they're never happy with it. It's really hard to balance Path without making it really annoying. Like, even Paths in the past that haven't been very good have still been so annoying that they've been changed anyway. Like, three mana, when you could just loop things infinitely, that got changed because it was just stupidly annoying to play against. 
Um, the one mana version, uh, but when it died, it killed all the creatures under it, so they couldn't do that, because uh, that was too punishing. Like, yeah. That was basically the problem with Path. They've been having issues actually trying to get it to work. Uh, and I'm not sure if this is good enough or is even fine. Like, I guess it kind of is because it's tempo loss and you can always just get Cataclysm. So this is more of a looping battle enter the battlefield effects at a cost. It's still cantrips. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm, I'm happiest with this version of Path than I have with any other version. I'll put it that way. Uh, Angelic Song. Angelic Song has been redesigned, so it only stops them from attacking your creatures, but then when it dies, you draw a card. Okay, when it, at the start of your turn, you draw a card. You can still destroy the Angelic Song, and then they don't draw. I actually really like this card now. Uh, it's not a one-turn heal enabler. It's not a fog effect that just stops them from attacking. So that's good. Uh, one-turn heal was just obnoxious. It always has been. But uh, now it's a little bit more like you have to play guards, guards or something. Your opponent can actually play around some of the stuff is the point. Whereas Angelic was just like, and no combat. So they actually have to think more about how they're going to play, which is, is fine. I like that. It's still going to be a good deck against control decks, for instance. Now, the other reason I like this is it's better in trials. Way better in trials because it can trips. And also you can use it to gain board advantage back. Like if you're stuck on the back row, you play Angelic, you move forward. You can do it with uh, Mono Order, although that seems a bit excessive because you can just leave two mana open anyway because you've got all the pacifies and everything. Whereas in trials, you don't, like you just have to pick up what you get. Uh, Order got a lot of trials buffs in general uh, for this patch. But yeah, in trials, you just kind of have to get like what you're given. Uh, you pick the best card out of the three you're given in each uh, each drafting uh, pick. So you don't always have those pacifies and guards, guards, and things like that. But in Constructed, you can build your deck, so you don't really need the Angelic. But the point is, it's less annoying and more usable, both in Constructed and also in uh, Trials. So I'm happy with this. Now, the last card is a replacement to Militia. This is cool. I actually like this. They replaced Militia because the Militia token... like. Militia was just a token. On Basic Alexa and on Guards Guards, it was a token, and it served absolutely no purpose in the game outside of it, because it was a useless card on its own. Now, Raijan was not happy it got replaced. He was hoping for it to just get buffed uh, back to its old version, where it's like, if you have a Militia on the board, its uh, cost gets reduced to zero. Like, I'm not sure if you could even have a Militia like that with uh, the Guards Guards being around and things like that but um it definitely could have been cool i personally would have preferred if a creature was added instead of shield bash uh but what well, time we go over the actual card so shield bash is a two mana one order instant spell yes they have another one now play shield bash only on an attack only on an allied attacking creature and only after your opponent has finished declaring blockers this is the rules text there. All creatures engaged in combat with that creature have zero attack until end of turn draw a card. So it's a reverse disarm, basically. Well, kind of. Uh, so basically what happens is you attack with a creature. Then on the second uh, time you can play tricks, basically your opponent decides blocks and can play tricks. Then you can play tricks as the attacker, uh, and then combat happens. In that second phase, you can play your shield bash. Now... I'm not sure about this. First of all, I played with it, and it seems playable. It's situational, which means it will never be like a four of, but playing two of them in mono order seems to be a good way of just messing with people, uh, because like, if you're winning to a point when you don't need it, it just cycles. Uh, which the thing is like it's good it's good at closing out games as well. Like Your opponent plays some stuff, and then you leave two mana open, and then they can't attack because half of your tricks are like two mana defensive ones. So they can't attack. Then you play guards, guards, or like touch of light, end of turn. And then you attack, and then you've got shield bash, cavalry field captain, Namir, the uh, soldier's memorial buff, all stuff you can do on your turn, like from hand. And that's an insanely difficult thing to play around. And shield bash is really, really effective with things like temptress of deceit as well. Or uh, my favorite combo. Murder Instinct. <laughs> That's going to come up in Trials sometime. That's really funny. But, um, yeah, I do like Shield Bash as a card. However, what this does come up with is I think that Order has too many tricks now. <laughs> They've had so many added. It started with just Pacify and the old Touch of Light, which wasn't very good. So they basically just had Pacify. 
Then uh, the guards guards was changed so it was instant and uh, was basically a combat trick with the three speed. Then touch of light was changed to be more powerful. That's another trick. And then shield bash replaced militia and that's another trick. So I would have preferred if there was a creature here instead of a... Uh, Another combat trick. There's so many of them now. Orders the king of combat. And even some of their creatures are combat tricks at this point. Like Namir and Cavalry Field Captain have inbuilt combat tricks on them. On both sides. Like you can tie up blockers with CFC and play around tricks. You can buff up your own stuff with Namir and Cavalry Field Captain. There's so many tricks involved with order now. It's absolutely insane. So, like I think the card is playable. I think it adds like another set like how many tricks do you want to play anymore like do you play 10 like I think you play more than 10 like I think I was playing four touch of like three pacify three guards so what's the limit like you're gonna play 15 combat tricks like what is this I guess like people thought nature had a lot of combat tricks they had eight order has like insane amounts like mono order mirrors are always hilarious because it's just like more than one trick per combat gets played uh, per player sometimes and shield bash cantrips as well which means you get to keep the uh, the cards going now that I do like a trick that cantrips but has a situational effect that's cool the reason that it's so cool is because order has no efficient draw at all they've got cantrips and they've got like um, like word of grace doesn't count path doesn't really count uh, I guess angelic song is another combat type trick and that uh, cantrip shield bash cantrips then you got uh, what, like Unbreakable Spirit? No one plays Unbreakable Spirit. So I like the idea that it can trips when you get, so you get value out of this. It's situational, but if you're in that situation, you get rewarded. You get a free kill, or you absorb that combat trick because they play like an ambush strike, and then you shield bash, and then protect your creature. That's cool. It also means that if your opponent has a Namir on board, and a cavalry field captain, and is attacking with that cavalry field captain and like two other creatures, and they have three mana up, good luck doing anything, because they could have any combination of tricks at that point it's impossible to play around that so i am happy about the card design i like the card design i like uh what they're trying to do with it i just think that there's a few too many combat tricks around right now like shield bash would be a really cool card in like um i mean it's technically still in base set but like when the game is released be a really really cool card if they had shield bash as a trick instead of like i don't know guards guards uh i guess or like I don't know, like, instead of Touch of Light, so you have the trio of, like, two mana combat tricks. you got the defense, the offense, and then guards, guards, that's kind of in the middle, because you can play at end of turn. So, like, that would be cool. I just think there's too many combat tricks in order right now. Uh, I think it's a little excessive. But besides that, I do like the card. I just would have preferred if they'd replaced it with uh, a creature instead of another combat trick. That's basically what I have to say about Shield Bash. For what it's worth, I will be testing it and playing it in uh, some order aggro decks. Now, lastly, we've got five changes to rarities. Well, technically six, because Shield Bash replaced the common with an uncommon. But we've got five changes to rarities. Now, three of them... Or is it three? No, four. Four of them are in Dominion, and one of them is in Order. So, Order... Basically, Angel Blessed Knight replaces Militia as the common creature. That's good. Now, they have... Angel Blessed Knight is not unpickable by any means, and it means you can actually play more Protector of the Innocents in Trials, which is appreciated. It also works well with Griffin Rider, because it's like you play Angel Blessed, they have to kill it with Assassinate or Fireball, because otherwise, like, they can't deal with the Protector ramped. That's not something you can really handle in Trials. So, they have to kill the Angel Blessed Knight, and then you play Griffin Rider, and then they probably don't have removal for the, uh, for the Griffin Rider. So, it works really well with the Mono Order curves in Trials. That's good. I like the fact it's common. That's, that's really good for Trials Balance. Uh, since Order had a woefully low uh, count of creatures they could actually play at common. So yeah, that's good. We now have another pickable creature at common. Shield Bash uh, is the uncommon now that replaces it, which is fine because it's another combat trick you can get at uh, uncommon. And it cantrips. Also good. And Angelic Song is more, play is more playable now because it cantrips and it helps you get back on board with your creatures as well. Whereas like, you can funnel them to your opponent... But if they want to attack you, you get say on like what combat is, and actually gives order a bit more of uh, just sustainability with the cantrips. So order, I think, in general, has become better in trials by a substantial margin. 
Now for the Dominion set of Trials changes. Now first things first, Paralost and Drayla got changed. They're no longer broken in Trials. I think Drayla's still quite good in Trials because that second ability is really strong. And being able to take a specific card out of your opponent's hand like a Cataclysm because people hold on to Cataclysms and Helms for very long periods of time sometimes. So you can take one of those. That effect is better in Trials. And... Uh, you can also leave it on board and just generate value from the second ability because the games are slower. So Drayla's still pickable in Trials, but it's it's not game-breakingly uh, just powerful. And then Power Lost is way weaker in Trials in general, so that's also a knockdown on Dominion. Now, the fours changed were Shadow Step Assassin and Silver Blade Warrior got changed to Uncommon. That's good. Uh, Silver Blade was very, very efficient for the cost, and it was very silly to see multiple of these in a row going second. So that's been changed, that's good. Shadow Step Assassin was the best two drop in the game uh, in Trials, and was arguably the best card in the game in Trials. Uh, I'm not sure if it was, but it was definitely up there. It was definitely the strongest common. Uh, so yeah, Assassin is now debatably the strongest uncommon. <laughs> That's how good it is in Trials. But yeah, now you won't be seeing any of those, well, probably not, any of those like five or six Assassin decks that just you can't ever, ever get a big creature on the board. So yeah, that's that's also a very, very good nerf. Now, the two replacements for them are Power Seeker, which is not a very good card in Trials, but it, it's pickable. It's pretty bad, but it's pickable. Uh, so that's a common now, which will make stuff like Power Surge uh, slightly higher pick as well, just by nature, because you're going to have a few more Power Seekers around. And, okay, this will make me laugh. Power Spike Armor is now a common. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. <laughs> So I've gone on record before saying Power Spike Armor is actually an implant that's so bad it's a better removal spell than a buff. Uh, Helios made the joke yesterday that it would actually be more powerful if it gave plus zero plus zero because then it would be an actual removal spell. <laughs> So, yeah. So, Power Spike Karma is, yes, now you get your useless common. That's that's okay. I'm happy with this. Alright, it's not useless. It's a, it, one in every, like, seven or eight games, it's playable. But it's really bad. It's really, really bad, and it's not something you want to be seeing. So, yeah, Dominion got quite a large hit in Trials, uh, which is good. Rest of the Trials balance... Uh, Wisdom got better by nature, getting weaker, uh, because Haldiri Rider got hurt quite a lot. 3-2 get it doesn't uh, kill library guards anymore, and it dies to Noxious Fumes, and it dies to Word of Fire, because the Word of Fire in, tri in Trials goes up to two levels normally. So it dies to a lot of removal right now, and it doesn't trade with... Uh, it doesn't trade with library guards anymore. It also means Spectral Alright is actually a reason to play Wisdom currently in Trials because the 3-3 body with uh, flying and 3 speed is really, really rare uh, and is really, really good. Like, it's only Phoenix that really has those kinds of stats now. Haldiri is also woefully bad against Griffin Rider. Uh, so yeah, Haldiri has fallen from grace quite hard in Trials, which means that... Uh, nature has been knocked down a bit, Dominion's been knocked down quite a bit, which means Wisdom is probably up there, like, on par with these guys now. Maybe not with Nature, I think Nature might be the strongest, because Elf Warrior is still, uh, common, right? But anyway, so Wisdom has gone up, Order's gone up, uh, Rage has gone up, in my opinion. Yeah, Flameborn wasn't that insane. Uh, now you can actually pick it if you have a Harpy in your deck. But Flameborn wasn't that insane, and now it's actually just as good as it was, pretty much. Because you've never been turned to. And Burning Rage is actually a pickable epic. It doesn't kill you anymore. So Burning Rage is a pickable epic, just as a New Horizons effect. That will occasionally draw you a card, which is all you can really ask for it. So, yep, that's good. And it gives you the red, which is nice for things like Phoenix. So, yeah. I think Rage has gone up. Order has gone up. Corruption has gone up, actually, because a lot of the cards they can't deal with have uh, been increased in rarity, like Silverblade Warrior and Haldiri is weaker, and, uh, like, there's less... Yeah, there's just less stuff they can't really handle around. So, the weaker factions have been increased in Trials, and the stronger factions have been decreased, which is very, very good. Uh, final overview... 
I actually think that this patch is quite good overall. Uh, for Trials, it's a very good patch. Uh, for Trials, I've been disconnected for inactivity. Uh, but anyway, it's a very good patch for Trials in particular. Uh, for Constructed, I think that the format coming out of this is actually going to be more diverse than the one going in, which is impressive. But now we may actually see some mid-range decks because there's n there's no, like... Basically, the game slowed down a turn. Why? Because there's still a bunch of one-drops going around, so it's like, what do you mean? The point is that there's less rewards for playing millions of burn spells, and there's less rewards for playing combos that kill you instantly. So the point is that the average kill time of an aggro deck is one turn slower. We're talking about corruption, implants, mono order. These have kill times of turn 8 or 9, whereas the old rage and elf decks had kill times of turn 6 or 7 in some cases, or could just deal massive amounts of burst, which means that the uh, kill times on aggro decks has been slowed down, so we're going to see more mid-range decks, we're going to see more control decks, Probably not Wisdom Dominion control decks because they have issues actually ending the game right now. But we'll see more control decks in general, which I'm happy with. Uh, hopefully a few more creature-based control decks. I think some, there's going to be some Harpy control decks, so uh, so stay tuned for those. But anyway, thank you all for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. If you have any feedback, want to ask me any questions about the uh, patch notes, put it in the comment section below. Bas now, it's been Jotto, signing off.